Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. First, the headlines. The Walayas of the Sultanate continue celebrating the blessed Eid al-Adha. United Nations aid trucks carrying food for besieged civilians in Aleppo remain stuck at the Syrian border. And European Union leaders gather for summit to jumpstart stalling bloc. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. On the occasion of the blessed Eid al-Adha, the citizens in the Walaya of Adam and the governorate of Dakhliya organized a horse festival. The event included a variety of shows in which the jockeys showed great artistic skills while riding the horses as well as competing in the horse races. The event witnessed a huge attendance from members of the society and those interested in horse festivals. The activities of the festival were accompanied by Omani singing arts to add a traditional feel to the event as such sports are considered part of the Omani heritage. The festival was presided over by His Excellency Ahmed bin Nasser al Marezi, Minister of Tourism. The government of Dahira witnessed a number of celebrations and festivals on the occasion of the blessed Eid al Adha. The activities varied among horse shows, traditional dance performance performed by locals, in addition to family gatherings and games for children. The participants expressed their joy and happiness on this blessed occasion as the celebrations witnessed a huge turnout by the members of the society to enjoy their Eid leave. The Directorate General of Tourism and the Government of Dofar organized an entertainment program entitled Joy of Eid in the Walaya of Marbat. It included a number of activities, namely children's shows and games, as well as traditional dances poetic sessions and other artistic performances. The participants expressed that the event mainly targeted the children to bring joy to their hearts and celebrate the blessed Eid al Adha with a sense of togetherness. Still to come in our news bulletin. Bikers in Berlin ask local authorities to develop cycling infrastructure in the city. the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. UN aid trucks carrying food for besieged civilians in Aleppo remain stuck at the Syrian border today. The truce was billed as the last chance to end the five-year war, but it has been marred by a lack of aid deliveries, sporadic violence and friction between Russia and the United States, which brokered the deal. News media reported that a barrage of rocket fire and shelling could be heard coming from the rebel-held East Damascus district of Jobar. The Syrian army is blocking an attack by armed groups that try to enter the capital's east via Jobar, leading to intense clashes and rocket fire. The United Nations has described the ceasefire as a critical window of opportunity to deliver aid to rebel-held eastern districts of Aleppo city, where around 250,000 civilians are besieged by government forces. The UN had hoped that 40 trucks of food, enough to feed 80,000 people for one month, could be delivered to East Aleppo as soon as possible. The UN Security Council will hold an urgent meeting today to hear details of a US-Russian deal on Syria as it weighs whether to endorse the agreement. Council members will meet for the closed-door consultation called as a UN aid convoy was blocked at the Syrian border. Under the deal, all sides were due to allow deliveries of food and other basic supplies to the battleground city of Aleppo after a ceasefire went into effect on Monday. 
Russia is pushing for the Security Council to endorse the agreement, but France and other Council members have said they first need to learn more details about the deal. Israeli police said today a Jordanian national was shot and killed after he tried to stab officers in Jerusalem. The man, who had a Jordanian and a Palestinian ID on his body, pulled out a knife and rushed at the officers outside the old city who opened fire. According to an Israeli police spokeswoman, it was the latest in a year-long wave of Palestinian attacks on civilians and soldiers that has killed 34 Israelis and two Americans. Some 211 Palestinians, majority of them were attackers, died in that time. Israel blames the violence on a campaign of incitement by Palestinian political and religious leaders. Palestinians said it is rooted in decades of living under military rule and fading hopes for independence. European Union leaders today anxiously sought to forge a sense of common purpose in the face of a planned departure of Britain and fundamental disagreements over everything from uncontrolled migration to the economy. The 27 leaders who are meeting without British Prime Minister, hoping their day-long talks in the Slovak capital will provide the broad outlines of a new Bratislav roadmap that should lead to a new look EU by next spring. Top of the agenda is how to heighten security and better defence cooperation secure eternal external borders to deal with chaotic immigration and come through on measures to get the vast ranks of unemployed youth in Europe back to work. North Korea is ready to counterattack in the face of ongoing provocation from the United States, its foreign minister said aimed a spike in tension caused by Pyongyang's latest nuclear test. The Korean people have incited that they are ready to wage a counterattack against provocation by enemies. Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho said at a meeting of non-allied movement in Venezuela. The warning comes after two U.S. supersonic bombers flew over South Korea on Tuesday in a show of force following North Korea's fifth and largest ever nuclear tests last week. Ri said the nuclear tests were needed to counter threats from Washington. It was inevitable that the Democratic People's Republic of Korea would use the option of nuclear armament after having done everything to safeguard national security in views of constant threat from the United States, he said, through an interpreter. Berlin cyclists are campaigning for an overhaul of the city's cycling infrastructure, and with twice as many bikes as cars in Berlin, Germany's political parties are taking note of what cyclists have to say ahead of regional elections. Here is a report. Reckless cyclists, distracted pedestrians and double parked cars. In Berlin, as the population goes up, so do the dangers on the roads. The spike in traffic and outdated infrastructure is driving some cyclists round the bend. I wouldn't say that it's risky all the time, but there are sometimes situations or areas that are really dangerous. Cyclists can be really aggressive. Personally, I think they are more dangerous than cars. The number of bicycle accidents is on the rise in the German capital, with some proving fatal. Already in 2016, eight cyclists have died on the streets of Berlin. So the city's cycling associations are working in tandem to solve the problem. They're petitioning the local authorities to organize a referendum on the development of cycling infrastructure in the city. Cycling is good for Berlin. It protects the environment, reduces noise pollution and cuts exhaust emissions. If we want to improve the city, then we need to invest in cycling. The organizers need to come up with 170,000 signatures in four months to set the wheels in motion on their referendum. They expect their project will cost 320 million euros. But at City Hall, the estimates are much higher, as much as 2 billion euros. A hefty price tag for one of the most indebted cities in Germany. So the authorities have other plans. We want to place a greater emphasis on public transport and better combine the flow of pedestrian and cyclist traffic. And we mustn't forget motor transportation, which has been ignored too much. It's my responsibility to bring some balance to the different interests of all the different transportation methods in the city. Germany's main political parties have put cyclists' safety on their manifestos ahead of regional elections. And in a city with twice as many bicycles as cars, the biker's ballot could make all the difference. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. 
Partly cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of Dofar with chances of intermittent drizzle. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with cloud accumulation and scattered rainfall over the Haja Mountains. Low clouds and fog late at night and early morning are expected over most of the coastal areas. Winds will be easterly to northeasterly light to moderate over the coast of the Sea of Oman, whilst on the rest of the coast it will be southeasterly to southerly light to moderate. Seas will be moderate along the coast of the sea with a maximum wave height of 2 metres and slight along the coast of the Sea of Oman with a maximum wave height of 1.25 metres. Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The Walayas of the Sultanate continue celebrating the blessed Eid al -Adha. United Nation aid trucks carrying food for besieged civilians in Aleppo remain stuck at the Syrian border. And European Union leaders gather for summit to jumpstart stalling bloc. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsrooms and the studio, it's good night.